share let's continue all right so the first one is to add your customer your customer record is very very important and one thing people look at mostly when you add your customer it's not even the customer name the customer address and all that even though those are necessary for contact and communication the two basic information you need as far as Facebook is concerned is the customer name and the balance because the whole essence of accounting is money so if you give me the name of your customer you're not telling me how much your customer is owing I really don't think that because if I want to generate my report I won't see that name there so because the only display names of customers are owing you so if you want this customer to show as a debtor all you need to do is pick the balance and enter into the system now what the system does is that that's what system uses to generate or call your account receivables in QuickBooks you don't just come in and say oh the total amount of money I have outside there is 1 million era there is no room to enter that what the system will ask you to do is list out the people that are owing you this money so let the system sum that balances up to give you your total receivable balances so that's what we want to do here so the first one assuming we have the first bank as a client let's say GT Bank is a client now from here GT Bank will be set up as a client they might also be a customer sorry they might also be a bank too a client and a bank so here we'll have GT Bank as a client oh let me not confuse us let's use um, a, a different company entirely let's use ABC Limited as a corporate client now if you enter ABC Limited you see that this place is marked asterisk which means it's very important it's marked asterisk it's very important then this is where you enter the phone number and the email address like I said the most important information you need there is the name and the balances uh -huh. so you enter the name you click add a customer now if you click add a customer here then you click on this customer edit the customer what you want to do now we want to add the customer balance okay. now you see we have title first name middle name last okay. name and all that but we are not interested in all this what we need is the name and the balance okay. so under here you come to payment and billing okay. under payment and billing you see opening balance now before you enter opening balance there are two questions that always come up that you need to answer in quickbooks there is a term called conversion dates conversion date is the date you're migrating from other accounting system to quickbooks it could either be excel and all that now and you know a business will always have a financial year which runs from which runs for 12 months could it be either be from january to december or whatever so let's assume that your financial year runs from january to december and now our setup is taking place on the 21st of august and the question is what balance are we going to enter here as our opening balance there are two options first you could either use or call the beginning of the balance method. Now, beginning of the balance method means that look for the financial year period. Then pick the balance as at the end of that period. Now, if our financial year runs from January to December, uh -huh. that means if I want to use beginning of the balance period, that means I have to pick my balance as at the end of last financial year, which uh -huh. is 31st of December 2016. Now, if I clean that balance here, this date will now be as at 31st of December 2016. That's which will which is the same thing as first of January 2017. Uh -huh. Now, assuming the balance is five to sixty thousand naira. Now, the question is, if I enter this balance, which is this customer balance, as at the end of this period. Uh -huh. Now, the easiest way to get this is your financial report. Editor can always make this available for you. Uh -huh. Not that. Now, the question is, what now happens to the transaction from January up to date? Because this balance is as at the end of last year. What happens to the Transactions at first to your dates. Uh -huh. Now, what you do is that you now bring in your detail, check your invoices, pick the transaction written to this customer, you start keying them in one okay. after the other. Okay. But that is going to be very, very stressful and cumbersome because to some organization, the reason I want to install QuickBook is to organize my records. Uh -huh. Now, if installing QuickBook is going to create more work for me, what's uh -huh. the SS? Why can't I continue? Now, the second option is now saying if you don't want to go in that route, because I've met a lot of clients that went in that route. Because they have an organized system that will tell them that oh we can trace all our transaction uh -huh. from January to yeah, date. Okay. The only advantage is that if you're able to enter all the transaction without missing any, you will system will capture the transaction. You will look at see if you've started this, using this system from January because you're able to check all your past transactions and all that. Uh -huh. So if there's any need for references, you can always use QuickBooks to do that. Now the biggest disadvantage is that if you omit a transaction at the current period. 
if by that you compare your bank balance in quickbooks and the actual bank balance as a date you see that there's difference okay. you now have to go back because the only way you can validate your transaction entry is to compare the balances in quickbooks and what you have in the bank if they are the same that means you've actually entered all the transaction so if you meet, omit any transaction you have to start going back Flash again time, to yeah. check and that is going to be stressful uh -huh. that's the first one now the second option is i want to pick today's date today's date does not mean it's going to be today we'll look for a closer date uh -huh. oh we are in august already okay let's pick july balances uh -huh. so we can close our book as at the end of july then pick our customer balance as at july Okay. Then all the transactions from 1st of August up to date, at least it's somehow close, so we can always uh -huh. get that. So the advantage of that is that you will get started faster. So you don't have to create double work for yourself okay. and all that. So in less than like an hour or two, depending on how bulky your transaction is, you should be able to capture all the transactions from January, sorry, from 1st to your date. But the advantage is that there are figures that you will still need to refer so you still need to explain for that. For instance, uh -huh. if the management say, how did it come about this balance? How did you get this balance? You have to make go back to the other records to validate that. Uh -huh. So which means that some of the transactions, transactions you have on the system will still need to be validated okay. by the transaction in other system. Okay. So you, it's like you're going to be running QuickBooks side by side with the other accounting system until okay. you're able to enter all the transaction or you have used it for at least six months or one year okay. where the past transaction may not that be relevant like that though you still need to make reference to it then so the advantage of that is that it helps you to get a system started immediately without going back to the past transactions and, and you're more likely to get your balances right in this current one than the previous one so for the purpose of this training uh, we're going to use today's balance but whichever you use like i said is either you use the past transaction past financial year transaction or you use the current date now because you already have quickbooks running on your system already mm -hmm. so yours is just to plug in into so which mm -hmm. means transactions are already mm -hmm. there place, exactly just to, just to continue okay. from there so we're only going to use this for the purpose of this training mm -hmm. so just for you to understand how setup is done mm -hmm. so our opening balance now is going to be as at the end of july which will be as at 31st of july yeah now opening balance is very very important not just for customers all your business parties any account head you add the opening balance must be as at 31st of july okay. so if i'm going to add my customer balance now it has to be as at 31st of july if i'm going to add my supplier balance at 31st so my balances across all account head must be as at 31st of okay. july it's very important you don't say oh first customer let's pick at the first um for supplier let's pick first third let's pick that will not be right because by the time you generate you want to generate a report at a particular date you see that some transactions will be missing out uh, so the balance has to be as at a particular date so okay. our opening balance date for the purpose of this training is 31st of july okay. so you end that at the first of july though there are other information you can also enter here like here we have times um some businesses they are straight when they create an invoice Terms of payment is like the condition huh? that a customer needs to meet before he uh -huh. makes payment and all that. Some terms could say, oh, you're expected to pay this invoice in 30 days. Some could say, come with a discount and all that. So, but for in, we are looking at this setup in terms of standard setup. Yeah. The two information you need is just the customer name and the balances. You can always enter other information like here, preferred payment methods, how you want them to pay you uh -huh. and all that, delivery methods. Here is stamps. This stamps here is we have due on receipt. What next 60 days means that anytime we send you an invoice, mm -hmm. you expect to pay us in 60 days, mm -hmm. it's 30 days, 15 days. Mm -hmm. This one is the moment you receive the invoice, mm -hmm. you pay us another. You can always add your own term. What makes people to be flexible is that the list you have in an option, it's not really strict. You can always add your own terms. For instance, if our term is saying 35 days and we don't have 35 days here, mm -hmm. I can always use add new to do that. So that's how but we're talking about setup uh -huh. so today we'll just be focused on setup, setup. Okay. so we have our customer setup and balances you click save and close here you can see 560 and as you are entering your balances on a real time your report is also generated real time which is why an accounting system is better than a manual system. Okay. If an accountant has been instructed, please can you generate a debtor receivable um, account receivable balance 
for us or a customer balances for us what the person needs to do is you have to start going through all the invoices start picking the balances pick a click all that means even though you don't report be available in two hours but the time it takes cannot be compared to what you just do when you click and generate your report this transaction will just enter alone when you go to the report section it's already showing there as a receivable balance mm -hmm. and all that so let's key in more customer to understand that better to add another customer on the system the customer section is under the sales mm -hmm. so you see we have a customer here then you see new customer sure. if you go to new customer then we we'll enter the customer name so here we can start with um let's pick xyz limited too then like i said payment and, and billing. billing then the opening balance the same date mm -hmm. 31st of july then 450 then you click save so I've added this so if you go back to this uh, on that customer section you see that you now have two customers we have two one already now because this balance is at 31st of july and it's more than you can see it's already picking it here that is this plus this so you're showing it as open oh, invoice so, okay, you, so this one is now like these two now, they are the ones owing. Yes, yes. This plus this, you can see, it's already showing it as opening the people that are owing you yes, right. and all that. So we have it here. So that's how you add more customers and all that. Go to more customers. Um, let's move pick down go to as another customer. Now there are three scenarios I'm going to demonstrate here. So the first scenario is when the customer is owing us, which is what I'm demonstrating here. The second scenario now is what if the customer has a credit with us? Okay. First. But the dates can change. Like, does it have to be. Okay, okay like if another customer, maybe we've not been working with the customer mm -hmm. like before or something, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. maybe the customer started having anything with us maybe mm. like the first week of August mm. or something like that mm. it doesn't matter no like that. well when if, if, if at the point of setup the customer is not on your list uh -huh. here now any transaction or any entry that occurs after the setup date is uh -huh. now a transaction not a setup again okay so if the customer is coming now, oh, supply, send this laptop to me. Okay. Oh, sorry, send this uh, software to me. And the cost of the software is $1 million. And, okay. it's, and the plan is that it's going to pay you like in two months or three months time another. You don't have to come here to set it up. Or you need, under the international entry, will teach you how to create a quote and create an, send an invoice. They want to send an invoice to that customer automatically is added to this section as a receivable. Do you understand that? Okay. So anything that takes place after this setup date, it's no longer a setup. It's not a transaction. Okay. But anything that occurs before, do that thing that form the setup. So we have the customer here. So you can see these are the three balances and all that. Now, it's another scenario is that what if the customer has a credit with you? Oh, this customer paid us one million euro and he's yet to pick up, or we're yet to go down to deliver the services and all that. Okay. Now, the difference between this and that is that at the point of creating the customer. Point of creating the customer, let's say let's pick FCMB as let's just use POC. So now if I leave it like this, mm -hmm. it means that the customer is owing us 1.2. But this 1.2 it's not an, an receivable, it's a credit. Mm -hmm. You paid it into our account. So what you need to because it's an opening balance. Um, entry uh -huh. you just add a negative in front of it uh -huh. do you understand so that's what it, but though if you look at this in the real sense because the account is basically used for your own internal consumption do you understand uh -huh. your original account for internal consumption uh -huh. and all that so but in the strict sense 
if your account is meant for public reporting and all that, uh -huh. you don't have to do it like this. Because the way you system will report it, you will report it to be adding negative. Yeah. Whereas this is like a deferred income for you uh -huh. and all that. So, but for just a small business who just wants to organize their account internally and all that, uh -huh. you just add the negative. Now, when you add negative in QuickBooks in front of a record, if it's a customer, it shows that this is a credit. Uh -huh. if, it's a, if it's a supplier, or a vendor, it shows that you have credit with them, them. meaning that you pay them in advance okay. and they have to supply you before this setup. Okay. So if I come here and click save, you will see that the difference between the first one I've entered and this one will okay. be description. Now you can see the type is already credit notes. Okay. So if, I, if you go to your sales customers, now in front of the description, you see that orders is telling you receive payments, receive okay. payment. This is create invoice. Okay. The reason is asking you to create invoices that you understand that you have already received money uh -huh. from this particular customer. Uh -huh. But what is yet to be done is to create an invoice, invoice. to clear this particular balance. Uh -huh. If you create an invoice and apply it here, there are two things that will happen. One, it will compare the value uh -huh. on that invoice with the credit. If the value on the invoice is equal to the credit, everything will be cleared, right. meaning that it's no longer owing you. But if the invoice is more, than the credit the other balance will become receivable balance meaning that this customer is supposed to pay you to balance up but if the invoice is less than this amount here it means that the customer still has a credit with you so that's how the system tracks the credit what if the customer is not owing you you just want to set the customer up at the point of entry the customer name the other payment ability you leave the balance at zero so you only add the customer name so these are three scenarios when you're setting up your customer. First, you add their customer balances, meaning that they are owing you. Then you add a credit if there's any customer with advance payments. Then the fourth one is if there's a customer with no balance at all, just leave it at zero. Any question on customer setup? Can I try? Yes. Let's try. Okay.